What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Cryptid Saturday and in today's video we are going over the cryptids of Florida. Um, Florida's cryptids so far have been a little bit more down to earth than some of the other ones, at least in the article that I found uh, about them. And I actually had to bring up two articles because I wanted to include one that was there and it's the Florida's Bigfoot, so yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, so in case you haven't realized this yet, I'm just going down the states in order, and whenever I'm done, I'm going to move on to the territories, and then we will uh, see where we go from there. If these things keep doing well, then I'll just keep doing them. And uh, yeah, but the only way they can do well is if you guys like this video, subscribe to my channel, turn on that notification bell so you never miss a video from me, as well as I would like you guys to drop comments down below with anything you would like for me to cover in the future. and what you guys think about the cryptids that we're going to read about in this article. Have you guys ever seen any of them? Uh, and um, if you guys would like, sometimes these articles have good descriptions or vague descriptions and not pictures. Uh, so I would always like to encourage you guys to draw them if you're any good at that and send them to me on Instagram, which will be at the end of this video. And I'll post them on my Instagram and let you guys see it. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, guys, let's get into this, the cryptids of Florida. Like I always like to say, I don't own the rights to any of these articles. I simply use them to push forth information to you guys. If you guys would like to read this article for yourself, please go on over to uh, panthernow.com and show them some love. But if not, let's just get through this together. And yeah, we'll try and have some fun. This one says, Florida cryptids you might have heard about. And that's a sketchy drawing of Bigfoot. Bigfoot is a name synonymous with myth, mystery, and controversy. Whether or not you believe in these creatures of secret origin, they in, they're they ingrained in our culture. Cryptozoology is the study of cryptids, and a cryptid is an animal whose existence is um, uns, unsubstantiated. Sorry. <laughs> Struggling to get some words out. Cryptozoologists study the nature of these animals, and more importantly, why they make a difference to people. Florida has a few cryptids that are native to our Everglades and suburbs. While you won't be seeing the Yeti, here is a few cryptids you may someday encounter. One or more elusive cryptids said to be roaming around the Everglades is the Skunk Ape. And we're going to go and I, I looked up a whole article for the Skunk Ape, so that's after this one. Um, He's characterized by a pungent odor and an appearance similar to Bigfoot, but smaller in scale like a human. His origins are unknown, but in 1997, he was photographed by Dave Sheely, who now operates the Skunk Ape headquarters in o Ocopee, Florida. Sheely offers Skunk Ape hunts as well as hopes to spread more awareness about the stinky creature in the science community. Like I said, we're going to get into a whole article on the Skunk Ape. And this is a panther looking thing with six legs. So that, that's kind of strange. The Wampus Cat. Across the other end of the Florida Peninsula, another cryptid is said to roam and stalk. The Wampus Cat is a panther like creature with six legs and is possibly bipedal. The yellow eyes and skunk smell are what distinguish it from a creature of known origins. The mythos of the wampus cat is varied, but the most common origin story is one of a beautiful woman who was turned into the creature during a ritual. There have been sightings of the cryptid in the Everglades, and it is possible location also spans through the Appalachians across 25 or so states. Um, I would be willing to say that these people are just seeing panthers, and since panthers aren't very common in Florida, they're probably just seeing panthers. Florida cats. Um, that'd be my best guess for that one. But I mean, because I just don't think a bipedal six-legged cat would, would be a thing. You got to kind of wonder like why. Although it does look like, at least in this drawing, that the uh, front two legs are like front two feet are more like for grabbing. Um, but there aren't really six-legged mammals. So that that's kind of weird in that sense. But I mean, you know, it, it could be real. But I think this one's more of like a misidentification with actual cougars because they're just not that common in Florida that regular people wouldn't know what they're looking at. The Hog Kong. The Hog Kong, not to be confused with Hogzilla, was killed in 2004 in Florida by Larry Early. Yeah, that was the one. It was supposed to be like the biggest pig ever killed on record. 
Uh, the beast was over a thousand pounds. The Florida man shot the hog Kong, which was reported to be one of the largest hogs on record with a .44 caliber gun. Similar to hog Kong, the Florida sea devil and the mega alligator are Florida's myths from reality. The mega alligator makes headlines every so often, but most recently being spotted on a golf course. The Florida sea devil originates from the same folklore of giant beasts and has been reported in Florida waters to be a of record breaking size. Yeah, I don't know. To me, um, let's get back to this. I, I think uh, this one here is just a classic giant pig. Like pigs get big. That's just a fact. Um, so I mean, there's not really much you can say nor do about that. Like pigs get big, and when they're attacking you, they look like they're bigger than they are. It's also really hard to measure a pig without killing it. So if you see a big boar, then you're gonna think it's just giant. It could be over a thousand pounds, but realistically, it probably isn't gonna be. Um, but I mean, there are, they can get big down in Florida, especially, and they cause a lot of damage. So, I mean, I can see where this could sort of turn into like a cryptid-esque story. But next is my personal favorite. It's Florida's Bigfoot. So tack that onto the tally of every state we've covered so far. Yeah. So this is, we're actually going to go into a full article on its own about the skunk ape. Because I think the skunk ape is like really cool. And I actually have a cool theory as to what it could be personally, or what it could have been then. And so we're going to hope you guys will let me know what you guys think. Um, this article comes from cracked.com. So please go there and show them some love. But this is the skunk ape is the Florida man of cryptids. Now, this is a picture of the skunk ape. Okay. At least that's its face and its head. This is the most famous picture of it. Florida has its own Bigfoot because of course it does. It isn't uncommon for different regions around the world to have myths surrounding a Bigfoot type creature. Yeah. Tell me about it. Every single state we've covered thus far has had one. But leave it to Florida to have a Sasquatch that only lives in their state. It is known as the Skunk Ape, which is an appropriately gross name for a swamp dill encrypted. In its appearance, the Skunk Ape looks about how you'd expect from a Bigfoot. It's covered in hair and walks on two legs, and most accounts of it claim it's about 7 feet tall and up to 500 pounds. The Skunk part of its name come from its, comes from its most noticeable identifying trait, its horrible smell. It lives in the Florida Everglades, an appropriately swampy territory for such cryptids. Okay, and here's like the full picture. So you guys like drop a comment down below with what you guys think this could be, because it, it, I mean, it almost doesn't look real. But we've heard about some strange Bigfoot so far in our little journey. But like this one here, it's so strange the way it looks. And it's like hide, hid out behind like palms, which is like really fun. The origins of the skunk ape, at least according to the skunk ape believers, go back to indigenous belief. Seminoles had legends of the SD Kapkaki, the SD Kapkaki, the tall man, who would later earn the less flattering title of the skunk ape. Its recent popularity really took off starting in the 1970s, probably not coincidentally at the same time as Bigfoot had gotten attention with things like the famous 1967 Patterson-Gimlin film. After an increase in sightings, there was even an attempt in 1977 to legally protect the skunk ape. Shockingly, this did not pass. Okay, so I gotta break down that a little bit, okay? So, lots of Native Americans have lore of, like, tall people. Or wild men. Places, like, places in the woods that they wouldn't go based solely off of, like, this is where the wild men live, or this is where these type of people live. And so a lot of people believe that these were actually Bigfoot. Like, Native Americans understood, okay, these are creatures that we live with, and we need to give them their space. As long as we give them their space and we have our space, they leave us alone and vice versa. Um, but then, of course, Europeans came over and the settlers started moving in. We were encroaching on those areas, and that's why, like, Sort of what like drove Bigfoot out, although a lot of people think it's a migrating creature to begin with. Um, and but yeah, but we're hearing myths and legends of these tall people or the wild men or the ape men or things like that from Native American tribes. So a lot of people think that you know Native Americans just knew about Bigfoot before we even got here. Um, the Patterson Giblin film, which we have oddly enough not actually covered yet on this, which I might just want to cover in a later video. Um, that is the film, the classic film of Bigfoot. That's where he was out and he filmed one walking. It's been on just about every Bigfoot documentary if you've ever watched one. And uh, 
Yeah, so that happened, and that sort of started like the Bigfoot craze of the nineteen sixty seven, like sixties, uh, the sixties and early seventies, and it kind of continues to this day. Like that is, that is the most convincing bit of evidence that we have seen, at least videographic wise, of a actual Bigfoot walking. Um, they think it's a female Bigfoot, and you know what? Maybe like on another stream, or I'll put up a video. We'll actually just like watch the video and go over it to and stuff but let me know if you guys would like to see that in the comments down below um but yeah so and on, them actually like trying to legally protect things like this is also not necessarily unheard of because i mean uh a lot like some cryptids actually do get like protection like there's considered to be enough evidence there i guess or at least people are just persistent enough to where other people will go, okay, so this may actually be a thing, but at least if not, we're just going to say, let's protect it anyway. Um, I, I guess this one didn't quite go through, because I think there's only been like one recorded sighting of the skunk ape, and it's that picture. Today, the legend is largely, largely kept alive by one skunk ape evangelist, Dave Shealy. After a lifelong resident of the area, Shealy first encountered a cryptid as a young boy. He subsequently had a few other skunk ape sightings, one of which he even captured on film in 2000. I don't think there's going to be any volume. So this actually looks like quite a bit like it could be like the Patterson Gimlin footage. Um, that I, I mean, I don't know, blurry and out of focus, but I think that one is more just a guy in a mask. Two minutes long, though. Do we want to watch this for two minutes? You know what? Whatever. It looks like he's walking through like kind of like marshy land. Kinda. Can't really tell. July 8th in 2000. This may not have been his video, but it looks sort of promising. I don't know, I'll let you guys go and look. Watch the rest of that. Now that footage may look mostly like a man in ape costume. There's no other part to that sentence. That's exactly what it looks like. I mean, a lot of Bigfoot videos look like a man in an ape costume. Regardless, Sheely owns and operates the Skunk Ape Research Headquarters in Okopi, Florida. This attraction, which is surely the finest research center in Okopi, features evidence of the skunk ape's existence, including footprints. Visitors can get tours from Dave Sheely himself and can even camp out in the Everglades. This is a point that the skunk ape skeptics, and more specifically Dave Sheely skeptics, often focus on. Sheely's property, which includes the campgrounds and the research center, is located near Big Cypress National Preserve, which Sheely views as a major competitor. While Sheely's dedication to the skunk ape has lasted way too long to just be considered a grift, some critics have pointed out that Sheely has struggled to compete with the National Preserve, and it's not too far-fetched to see how he would use the skunk ape lore as a way to maintain relevance. That's true. I mean, if, if he's like, he's kind. It kind of seems like this guy has made his living off of the skunk ape, so it would kind of be in his best benefit to get a video of it and trying to keep it alive. So that's why a lot of people probably also may think that photo is fake. Outside of Sheely, though, what draws people to believe in the skunk ape? Again, there have been skunk ape sightings beyond Sheely's total real footage. These might be explained by the prominence of ape populations no seriously in the region especially sanctuaries that house orangutans damn it they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna call me on this one people may have spotted an escaped orangutan and because there typically aren't orangutans in florida their brains filled in the rest of the details to convince them that what they saw was actually a skunk ape this would fit in with reasons cited for why people believe in cryptids as people don't want to think that they're crazy, so they believe in a cryptid to back up what they believe they saw. Regardless of whether the skunk ape is a hoax meant to attract tourists to a specific campground or the misinterpreted orangutan, the cryptid truly embodies the strangeness of Florida. Okay, well, they sort of beat me to the punch. To me, if you were to put this up against like a male orangutan, right? I think we can even do that. So look. So this is a female orangutan, right? So if you look at the way her face is, and this is probably just in the lighting. Also, I'm stealing, I'm borrowing this picture from uh, 
some website. Uh, please just, you know, if you guys can find it, go find it there. Uh, but like, look, so like that's like really shaggy. They're really tall. Look at her face. Like the proportions are right. Like, but now you also got to remember, okay, this one here has been living in a swamp. So like just a darker colored coat, you know, or, it may, you know, it could have been a morph. Maybe like it's the one that was born there. Um, but I think, and like, if you look at the eyes, like the eyes are going to reflect in the dark and yeah, like once they smile to me, it's just, it's perfect sense that this is a orangutan that got out that no one knew what it was. And this guy just took a picture of it. That being said, this is also the same guy who's literally making a living off of the skunk ape. So I'm, this is one of the ones like, this is my opinion on what this is, that like the skunk ape is probably an escaped pot, like Heck, it could even be an escaped population of orangutans that have just adapted more to Florida's climate. Like, maybe the black coats were a advantage somehow. Maybe they became, like, slightly more nocturnal. You know what I mean? And orangutans build nests and stuff up in trees. So they would have to be, like, blending into cypress swamps and stuff. Maybe it's just got, like, cypress caught. Or maybe it's just the way this guy took the picture. You know what I mean? And, like, so maybe there's a very, very small population of, like, wild orangutans that we don't know about or that have escaped, like, research facilities or just pets that got let go. Um, even even if it's not, like, a breeding population, maybe it's just one or two, maybe it's just, you know, one or two that have just occasionally escaped. And now we are looking at it as, like, oh, this is, like, a real thing. But it's not. It's It's a real ape and it's a real creature that people are seeing, but it's not a skunk ape. Um, so that, that's where my thought comes in. You know, if you got like an old orangutan, they're first starting to go white. I mean, look at this one's face. She's got like a full blown white beard, almost just like this thing. She's got super shaggy coat, just like this thing. The face proportions are almost the same. Like you can even see like the eye ridges. Like, look, she's got eye ridges right here. That thing's got eye ridges. That, he, this guy, if this was a faked picture, he might've even just like died in orangutan black. And just took a picture at night. If this was fake. Which I said, I don't know if it is or isn't. But if it is, that that's my opinion on whether or not, on what it is. Hey, uh, future Alex here. Sorry about the quality. I'm in a very well lit room, as you guys can tell. Uh, so the rest of the audio cut out on that particular end of the video. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it now. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think the uh, skunk ape is just an escaped orangutan? Let me know what you guys thought about any of the other cryptids I listed off in this video. Let me know if you guys have ever seen any of them. Have you guys seen a skunk ape? Have you guys heard or smelled a skunk ape? All of that would be great things for me to know. Hope you guys like my haircut. You got a little bit of a preview of it for next time. Uh, please go ahead, though, follow me on all of my social medias, which will be next here. Go ahead and hit that like, comment, subscribe, and turn on those notification bells. Send those pictures over to my Instagram, and I will see you guys in the next video.